After all, moon is a satellite for this planet and helplessly strong to this planet and making its rounds. So what is the significance? Why these full moons and no moons are hell significant? <coughs> Probably many of you know that You may not know, I hope you do not know this by experience. You should know that if someone is uh, mentally disturbed on a full moon day, on a new moon day, they get little more disturbed than usual. You are aware of this? Hmm? Happens to you? Say yourself, you just be with me, don't worry about the camera. <laughs> so, uh, it doesn't happen to you, but it does happen to somebody. So it is not that moon instigates madness, it is just that when the moon takes certain positions, it heightens whatever you are. If you are loving, you become more loving. If you are joyful, you become more joyful. If you are blissful, you become much more blissful. If you are little insane, you become much more insane. If you are meditative, you become far more meditative. It just enhances everything that you are. So we considered these days important so that you consciously create the right kind of quality in you so that it gets enhanced. Today is Pavnami, in the morning you get up and you be in a certain way, you create a certain quality in you so that by evening that quality is enhanced. So whatever the qualities that you are, so that you start engineering it more consciously than being a victim of unconscious eruptions within yourself, so the moon is not… does not make you mad or meditative, it just enhances whatever you are. You know even the ocean goes mad, if you… if you are a swimmer on the beach, it's madness for you. But if you are a skipper of a large vessel, it is a boon for you. <laughs> But something is happening. The very ocean is trying to rise. When the very ocean is trying to rise, the situation, the situation may be conducive for you also to rise probably, if you are willing to make use of it. And moon's influence on human life is far more than that. To do anything with yourself, to be aware where the moon is could be useful because it creates different types of qualities and energies in the system. If one is aware, he could make use of it. <coughs> in English language, moon is lunar. If you take a step further, uh, you become a lunatic. So generally the influence of the moon is considered illogical. Anything illogical generally in the West got labeled as madness or insanity. But here we always saw the limitations of logic. Logic is very useful to conduct the material aspect of your life. If you want to do your business, you want to build a house, you want to do all the things in the world, you have to be logical, there is no other way to conduct it. 
This is the problem with us. To conduct the outside, we call the divine. To conduct the inward, we try to go at it logically. It does… both don't work for us. So, when it comes to subjective dimensions of life, if you are not willing to step beyond the limitations of your logic, then nothing ever will happen. If I ask you to close your eyes and do something very simple, you sit here and calculate, okay, if I do this, what will I get, what will happen, this, 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 nothing will ever happen to you. If anything beautiful has to touch you in your life, if meditation has to touch you, if love has to touch you, if bliss has to touch you, you must be illogical. Everything is logically correct but you have a long face because everything is correct with you. <laughs> You're correct but life doesn't work, work like that. If you wake up in the morning, tomorrow morning when you wake up, lying down in your bed, think one hundred percent logically. Do not think of all those beautiful moments in your life, do not go back to any experience which matters to you. Do not think of the birds in the sky, the sunrise, the flowers in your garden, your child's face or a loving moment in your life. Don't look at any of that. Just think logically. Now you actually have to get out of bed. That's not a small feat. Hmm? Is it a small feat? It's not a small feat. And then you have to go to the toilet. Then you have to eat, work, eat, work, eat, go to sleep. Again tomorrow morning same thing. Cut out the experiential aspect. Think of your life hundred percent logically and see. You have to do the same damn things for the next thirty, forty, fifty years. And if you do yoga, it gets elongated. <laughs> it gets stretched further, you know. <laughs> The same nonsense every day, every day, every day. Just think logically, is it worth it? Is it worthwhile? Is it worthwhile? No. Moments of extreme logic or moments of suicide. And all of you have been committing suicide like this, but you don't do anything these days in one shot. You do everything in installments. You are committing suicide also in installments. I want you to just look back, if you are unable to look back, when you go home today, I want you to rummage into your old pictures and see when you are five, six years of age, how your face was. It was like this. No. It's getting longer and longer. So, if you have to step out of your logic, unless you do it in a certain way, it sounds senseless. Because right now, your idea of sense is only logical, isn't it? But please see, the most beautiful moments in your life have happened to you only when you kept your logic aside a little bit. Yes? Logically examine your love affair and see, it'll be the most stupid thing you can do, really. Yes or no? Maybe it's the most beautiful thing in your life, but logically dissect your love affair and look at it, it is the most idiotic thing you can do. But it might have become the most beautiful experience in your life. So the logical dimension of life, and the experiential possibility of who you are, are diametrically opposite. So in yoga, we look at you as two aspects, the sun and the moon. You've seen the symbolism? You've heard of the word hatha, hatha yoga? Hatha means ha, means sun, tha means moon. So these are the two dimensions. The various symbolisms for this, you have seen Shiva being represented as half man, half woman, all these things to suggest 
there is a logical dimension to you and there's a dimension beyond that. If you do not explore both, you will be an incomplete human being or you will be only half alive. So when we say a spiritual process or yoga or whatever, what we're looking at is how to become a full-fledged life process, not a half-life process. Just the body is alive, that's not good enough. Everything in, in you should be a flame. Only then you will see whether something is happening or nothing is happening, it's worth being here. If you sit here, it's worth being here. If you open your eyes, it's worth being here. If you close your eyes, it's worth being here. Otherwise, whatever is happening, it's not worth being here simply because only a part of you is alive, the other part is, is yet to come alive. So the moon, today being a full moon, the clouds are hiding it but don't worry. Whether you can see it or not, the influence of the moon is very much there. Because on a no moon day or a new moon day, the influence of the moon is far more than on the full moon day. So whether you perceive something or do not perceive something is not the issue, the influence is anyway there. There is a logical element to you, which helps you to handle the material well. There's a dimension beyond logic, without it the subjective dimensions can never be accessed. The moon is a symbolic representation of that dimension. 